I just don't buy this sort of Britain can't operate outside of Europe. Britain doesn't lead in the world sort of rhetoric that Gina constantly pumps out. Um, no, I, I say it's a it's transition that we need in a proper plan. We don't have a transition plan. Good evening, panel. It appears the UK will have to re renegotiate its relationship with the EU in order to save its car manufacturing industry. What would the UK have to offer that would sweeten the deal for the EU, considering all those many manufacturing jobs that might go to the EU? OK. Um, Stephen Morgan. So I think Orff is referring to um, electric car issues that were... Um, of well, I think Vauxhall, in Parliament today. who I didn't actually realise that Vauxhall now owns Fiat. So Stellantis, Peugeot, which is a big car owner, Citroen. they own all these um, brands. They, they are worried about that, but uh, I, th I think there are more issues at stake here rather than just electric cars. I mean, just on electric cars, I think uh, deeply worrying news, and I think the government should have seen this coming. Um, you know, Keir has clearly said that we need to make Brexit work and, and want to bring down some of the barriers that are existing for trade. Um, but the government have got to take action here. We've got to protect British jobs. Uh, we've got to. But what can we markets. offer the EU to encourage them to come to a deal on this? Well, I think we've just got to negotiate, haven't we? We've got to sit down, get around the table and, and find something that works. We've got to invest in Britain. We've got to support research work. Uh, you know, we're really clear that we want to invest in green jobs. Um, and we've got an industrial strategy to make that happen. The government haven't got an industrial strategy, and I think that's why we're in some of the mess that we're in. But, but if you were the leaders of France, Germany, Spain, Italy, all of whom have big car industries, wouldn't you be licking your lips and thinking, well, uh, the Brits have made their bed, they can lie in it. There's nothing that, we can, that they can give us that we would want to come to an agreement on this. Well, I mean, that's a challenge we face out of the European Union, isn't it? But um, we've got to find a way to make this work that's good for our economy. Well, many would say that what would be good for our economy would be to go back into the EU. And if Labour offered proper leadership, that's what Keir Starmer should stand up and say. Well, I, I was a Remainer. Um, I campaigned for a people's vote. Um, but, you know, we've moved on since then. We've got to make sure Brexit now works. And, and Keir set out his five-point plan to make that happen. OK. Kate? Yeah, I think it's about promoting brand Britain, isn't it? And, and finding new and different ways to make those connections and make it, it, it beneficial for companies to be here. And um, whether that's tax breaks or what so that we can get jobs in um, and just creating that sort of that environment where people want to come here and that we can we can get those jobs in rather than going back and negotiating backwards and forwards. It's like you say, you know, it's already been done. So. Gina? It's not been done and it's pie in the sky to think you can't, it's not about going back, it's about the reality. It's about the reality of what we're facing and business uh, uh, sector after sector um, are, are suffering from lack of skilled workforce, they're um, suffering from barriers to trade, you know, Bloomberg, um, all the experts, LSE, all of them are saying that we're in for a tough time. We actually haven't seen the worst yet because there was a bit of a, um, a sort of a uh, rolling back of the full implications when the pandemic was on. But, you know, in, in business investment is down 19% compared to the G7 average. Um, we're looking at... Uh, was it before Brexit? Before Brexit, it was closer to 27. So we're down, you know, already. And this is only the beginning. Well, um, 19 down is better than 27 down. No, 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 from 27%. So we're down 19% from that. Okay. So um, also we've got, um, you know, Bloomberg saying that we're looking at about, a, a you know, 100 million a year, a billion a year deficit going forwards when it comes to trade. You know, the, when, when people talk about not going back, this is not about going back. This is about going forwards to a relationship where we reduce the damage because we can't go back in. We have to find a better way of actually trading with the EU and whilst we also do other trade deals around the world. But when you remember that the arch Brexiteers, the architects of Brexit, Mr Farage, Mr Hannand, Mr Frost, all wanted us to be members of the single market. They originally never said in any of this that we were supposed to leave a single market. And because everyone got um, caught up in this, including Boris, who said, you know, the night after, what have we done? Because we got caught up in this, they went to a much more extreme Brexit without any plan, any real understanding of what the impact would be on sectors and industries. And we have got to be 
honest about but, this. But now. answering Ulf's question here, what can we offer the EU to encourage them I, on this issue, on the on the Vauxhall issue, to come to a new agreement? It's not about the EU. It's about us saying that uh, we have to actually show the EU that we act in good faith, that we have a stable government, that we're not politicising everything, that we stand by the rule of law, both internationally and also um, from a moral point of view. It is showing that we are grown-ups. So when, when, when we can prove that and we can act in good faith, we can get round the table and negotiate because it's got to be a win-win for both sides. That's the whole point of negotiating. Don't, don't you think that Rishi Sunak is... I mean, he's got he a very, very different approach to Liz Truss and has. Boris Johnson. He has got a very different uh, uh, approach, but then it doesn't help today in some of the things he said in Japan. It doesn't help what his what, Home Secretary he, saying, said in Japan. Um, you know, that uh, the Brexit benefits are, and then rolled out that the scrapping EU law was a way to show that uh, Brexit was uh, benefiting us. Well, there is no evidence of that. Richard Holden. Well, I mean, Doug, I'm just going to fundamentally disagree with a lot of what um, Gina has just said. And the idea that Britain doesn't stand by the rule of law is, or has shown that it... Uh, that it uh, doesn't is obviously nonsense. And we were well, the, it does, it's, but in a spe specific yeah. and limited way. Well, I think if we look uh, more broadly about what the biggest issue that's facing Europe at the moment and standing by the rule of law, it was Britain that led the way in response to the recent crisis in Ukraine when the German government wanted to send helmets. Uh, we'd already been training Ukrainian soldiers for years and were stepping up with sending arms and leading the way. I say that's standing by the rule of law rather than trying to, as others initially did, uh, try and weasel around and uh, protect their but, own self But on this specific issue... So I think that's an important point to actually to make there. The idea that Britain doesn't stand tall in the world, uh, I think, is nonsense. And I and I think, actually, we led the way in Europe on that. So I just I just think it's just a point worth uh, making. On the broader point uh, around um, rules of origin, I actually know quite a lot about this because I've got Nissan just down the road from my constituency and it's one of the biggest employers of my constituents and I did a lot of uh, speaking to them uh, when we were going through this at earlier stages. Um, I don't know the specifics of um, what's being discussed around uh, this specific car manufacturer at the moment. All I know is that Nissan uh, were able to put a billion pounds of investment into Sunderland, uh, tick all the boxes of this a combination of UK and EU rules of origin. If there's, if there's something that needs to be done then, we put uh, some government support into that as well at the time, around £100 million and for a billion pounds investment, delivering high skill manufacturing jobs in the uh, northeast of England for decades to come. I don't know the specifics of why this is the case here. Um, so I'd be really interested to see it. And I know that Kemi has already said that she's looking at this uh, in depth at the moment. Um, but I think there are, ben there, there are things that we can do differently outside the uh, EU, which can benefit and the country as well. You can look at the rules around Solvency 2 reform, which is being looked at at the moment around um, what we can invest in um, as, a, as a country uh, and what our uh, financial services can invest in. Um, looking at some of the other, th the other deals we're able to do around the world, which we wouldn't have been able to do when we're in the EU as well, whether that's the Japanese trade deal or now looking towards um, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. There are, there which is 0.1%. That's what's predicted to give our GDP, the CPTPP. Of all the experts have said, mm. it will contribute 0.1%. Yeah, and, uh, and, but there are, there are things we can do outside the EU that we couldn't have done inside the EU and, and I'd be very interested to know the full details of this because when I got stuck in uh, with Nissan to, to help them out at, at that point, it turned out that actually the, uh, the, the problems which they initially thought might be there were not, as, uh, were not as prominent as they were later. And in fact, it led to a major investment into the Envision a battery manufacturing plant just down the road uh, from my constituency. What's happened to that battery plant now? I mean, it's operating fully, as far as I'm aware. There was, there was a battery plant there that went out of business, wasn't uh, there? There was a proposal for one north of Tyne. I mean, right. I know Gina probably, you know, um, she doesn't probably know the northeast as well as as well as I do, but there's a one which is being looked at north of Tyne. But the one that Sunderland looks to be doing uh, really well and potent has a massive potential for growth um, and, and as as well uh, as we look at other things. And there's, there's I think there's, I think to, um, I, I just don't buy this sort of, Britain can't operate outside of Europe. Britain doesn't lead in the world sort of rhetoric that Gina constantly pumps out. Um, no, I, I say it's a transition it's... that we need and a proper plan. We don't have
have a transition plan. No, I, I, well, I don't think that's true. And the, and the way you talk about the country as some form of, you know, uh, state which doesn't back the rule of law when people come in here internationally to use our legal system, um, which is, you know, world renowned. We keep threatening to break when, international when, law. When, when we, when, when we, uh, uh, the ones who stand up for international law in countries like Ukraine, I just, I just gets really boring when you're constantly talking the country down.